Okay, this is the first part of our viruses presentations. This is big vein virus on lettuce. So virus is from the Latin for poison. Um, virus singular, virus is plural. There's about a thousand different species that infect plants. Here we have Camellia yellow model virus, which several of you have used for your virus samples. So they're really quite small, 20 to 2,000 nanometers in size. There's a genome composed of nucleic acid, and then capsids are composed of protein. They're able to replicate within host cells. And of course, they have the ability to cause disease in most cases. So they're incredibly small. Um, you can see bacteria is actually larger than viral um, organisms. And you, this electron microscope is really the only way you would be able to see them. There's several different shapes for virus. Here we have rods, which are representing tobacco mosaic virus, and then we've got spherical, which represents barley yellow dwarf virus. And this is what they look like on the plants. And it's important, important to note that tobacco mosaic virus occurs on many different plants, and I'll talk about that in our next presentation. Okay, here we've got germinate and bacilliform. Bacilliform virus occurs on rice, and the germinate type is going to be represented by maize streak virus, and that's what these look like. And you can see this is a leaf hopper here that spreads this disease on the right. So they're obligate viruses or parasites, so they can't grow in media, so it's difficult to diagnose them. You identify the plant species, and then you identify patterns and timing on spread of disease, and there won't be any signs. There's only going to be symptoms. So they're transmitted from plant to plant by insects, nematodes, mites, sap, that's mechanical transmission through tools, through humans fungi and fungus-like organisms. They can also be, be shared through root grafts. So virus entry into a tough cell wall can happen through wounds, can happen through insects, and of course thrips are one of the worst transmitters of viral diseases to plants. So I've got a great video of this, but uh, this is what it looks like when an aphid vector feeds on a plant host. Uh, it comes in through the food canal and goes out through the salivary duct. And this is what it looks like inside of aphid with barley yellow dwarf virus. So transmission can happen through aphids, white flies, thrips, larvae and adults, eriophyid mites, nematodes, leaf poppers, etc and it can be non-persistent, that's acquired and transmitted in short time, usually in seconds, and then persistent, it could take minutes or hours to acquire and transmit. Um, there's also a latent period delay between acquiring and transmitting. So non-persistent are stylet born, they don't get in and, and circulate around the body. Um, Persistent circulative move inside the vector and are replenished from the host. And then persistent propagative replicates inside the vector and can actually be passed on to eggs and nymphs. So real quickly here, we've got the type of transmission, non-persistent, stylet born, seconds to minutes, maybe can retain, retain within the uh, insect hours to days, latent period, no, and doesn't multiply within the vector. Persistent propagative, minutes to hours, retention time could be days to months, there could be a latent period, and it can multiply within the vector. And then persistent circulative, minutes to hours for acquisition time, retention time, life of insect, latent period, and multiplication in vector. 
not. Okay, so here's a, an example of a non-persistent virus. This is cucumber mosaic virus. Um, this is spread by aphids, and it's also spread by cucumber beetles. It overwinters in wild cucumber seed and wild perennial milkweed, ground cherry, and matrimonial vine. Uh, it's important to note it's not going to just get cucurbits. It's going to get many other things. This is one of our most common vir viral diseases out there. Okay, so here are some persistent propagative viruses. We've got impatience necrotic spot, a another one that's very common and in other types of plants. Tomato spotted wilt also. And there's a unique relationship between thrips, such as western flower thrips and tomato spotted wilt virus. Only the larval stages of thrips can pick up the spotted wilt virus and they spread the virus as adults. It's transmitted by thrips, especially by the western flower thrips. Immature thrips get the virus when feeding on diseased plants and spread the virus as adults when feeding on healthy plants. Here's our western flower thrips here. We've got nymphs on the left, adult on the right. Okay, here's beet western yellows virus. This is a persistent circulative virus spread through green peach aphid and can, which can retain it for the life of the insect. Okay, so transmissions of viruses to the next generation. This can happen through the debris of infected plants, overwintering host plants, both crops and weeds, seed, overwintering vectors, and vegetative propagules such as corms, bulbs, and tubers. So here's tobacco rattle virus on peony. So don't let the name of the virus get you. It's just probably the first plant that they discovered the disease on. This is spread by nematodes. Here's rose rosette virus, which is spread by Ariophiid mites. So survival and spread can happen on tools and equipment, in soil, in plant debris, plant structures, seeds, vegetative parts, in insect and other organism vectors. And here's a soil-borne mosaic virus spread by a soil-borne fungus, wheat soil-borne mosaic virus. So how do you manage these things? Well, avoid by planting at a different time or different location. Exclusion would include quarantines using plant virus-free plant certified and greenhouse screening, which is really tricky because thrips are one of the things that spread these viruses. And thrips can get into very small screens, very small holes in screens. So you need to have very tight mesh on your screens. This gets to be tricky when you're trying to avoid fungal diseases because the airflow in your greenhouse isn't going to be as good. So you kind of have to figure that out. Eradication, you can destroy the vector, remove infected hosts. You can use heat treatment. It's commonly used to inactivate the virus prior to cultivating or culturing meristems in tissue culture. Protection would be uh, having fallow fields, barrier crops, reflective mulches, and that's for the insects that are spreading them, insecticides, and that's really the thing. We're not, there's no virucides. You need to deal with the insect, insects that are spreading it. Cross protection and plant resistance. So this is for a non-persistent virus. So you've got your virus-infected aphid. And what you do is you create this barrier crop. And so your primary crop is going to be within this square. And it will feed on whatever you've got growing around the edge here. In this case, we've got a sunflower crop. And the virus stays in the sunflowers. It does not move on to the primary crop. Okay, here's what it looks like. Uh, cucumber mosaic virus spread by sap, uh, tools, hands, etc. 
So cucumber mosaic virus, of course, affects members of the cucurbit family, but it gets vegetables, woody and herbaceous ornamentals, and native plants. So as many as 191 host species in 40 families. And this is actually what it looks like on pepper, not in the same family. So it overwinters in many weeds and flowers um, and crop plants. So weeds harbor the virus and aphid population. So this is lamb's quarters. So it's primarily transmitted by aphids and they can acquire it in only five to se 10 seconds of feeding. It can also be spread through seeds or bulbs in some plant species. Insects and humans, during cultivating and handling of plants, they readily spread the virus to healthy plants. So damage looks like uh, the leaves are mottled and wrinkled with yellow and green blotches and the edges are cupped down. And then if it's infected early in the season, it, it will dwarf the plant. Later infections, you'll see this mosaic on the late season growth. The fruit will develop these wart-like bumps and will not taste good. And this is what it looks like on Nandina. So it, as I said, it crosses family lines here. So management includes removing all infected vines or plants, remove all wild cucumber, vine, milkweed, any other susceptible weed hosts and keep them uh, outside of a thousand feet of the field if possible. Control your aphid vectors and avoid unnecessarily feed, feed act, field activity which can spread the virus.